That's all right, too. Amen. He gives us wisdom. What a joy it is to be here with you tonight in the house of God. I, I just feel a, a special presence of God. Have you ever walked into the house of God? And, and uh, Brother Terry, you just felt like God was up to something. Anybody ever felt like that before? Uh, Brother Linwood, I can't quite understand it, but I just walked in. Maybe you walked in the house of God and you said, you know, I'm going to try to behave myself tonight. And then the Holy Ghost just blesses and you said, wait a minute, Lord, you're in charge. Have your way. You're in charge, Lord. Amen. If you have your Bibles and would like to read along with us tonight, would you turn with us into the New Testament book of Acts, chapter 27. I call your attention to verse 14 and selected verses that follow. Acts chapter 27, 
beginning at verse 14. In just a moment, we'll stand to honor the reading of the Word of God. But while you're still turning to Acts 27, again, I want to thank Pastor Eddie for his confidence that he's placed in us. You know, we live in a day and a time, I often say it, that a pastor has to be very careful whom they invite to share the Word, to speak with their people, because God has placed responsibility over as a shepherd over the flock. Can somebody say amen? amen. And I thank you for your confidence that you've shown in me. And, and uh, I seek only to please the Lord God. Amen. 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 If you're physically able to stand, may we all stand to honor the reading of the word of God. And if you found Acts 27 and 14, say, I've got it. Whether your page is turned, whether your page is glows, whether it's an app on your phone, it's still the Word of God. Amen. Amen. 27 verse 14, it reads, But not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Euroclidon, or some may pronounce Euroclidon, and then we move into verse 18, and we, being exceedingly tossed with a tempest the next day, they lightened the ship. Now verse 22 reads, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ships. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, oh, yeah. saying, Fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given all them, the all them that sail with thee. Now, let me just insert right here. The angel of God has appeared to the Apostle Paul. We're going to tell you a little bit about his predicament in just a moment. But the angel of God has already given him an insight to a future event that is yet to happen. So that tells me that when God gives us a promise that he's going to do this for us, he's going to answer this prayer for it. Brother Nathan, he's going to uh, work this out in your life, in your ministry, in your home, in your family. If he said that's going to happen in days to come, what you're going through right now will not change any of that. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Somebody needs to hear that what you're going through right now will not change God's divine plan for you. He knows my name. Verse 25, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told to me. I like that. Somebody say, for I believe God. Say it again, for I believe God. May we now bow our heads and go to our Lord in a word of prayer. And I ask that not only you bow your heads reverently, but that you pray and ask God to give us a special movement, a special arrangement. I ask my wife, my partner in ministry, to ask God's blessings over the reading of his word tonight. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the presence that we already sense in this place. From the very first song, the congregation song, we felt your power as we exalted you. But Father, tonight's a new night. We need a new blessing and a new word to carry us through, God. Those that's wandered into this place tonight with a special need, to meet every need in this building. And you'll do that through and by your word that's going forth that will never void. I pray, God, for Mike that his sinuses and his allergies would not interfere with your plan and your purpose tonight. I pray, God, the people will be healed, saved, delivered in the name of Jesus. The word. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said together, amen. As you're being seated, shake somebody's hand and tell them, God has a blessing for you tonight. Would you tell them that? God has a blessing for you tonight.
and you may be seated. Now, in line of announcements, let me just briefly mention, out in the foyer, we've got our ministry product table. I was almost out of CDs uh, yesterday. We got a shipment in today, and the song that that we sang a moment ago, I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. I like those old songs, Brother Ed. My wife picks at me because I like the old songs. She says, honey, you're one of the youngest old men I've ever seen in my life. Let me give you some. I said, all right. But I love those old songs. And uh, we've got that featured on one of our CDs along with my testimony of how God healed me. How many know that he's still a healing Savior? Amen. Thank you so much. Again, we're indeed honored to have some friends visiting with us tonight. We were in revival last week over in Stantman, and I didn't realize that, that it was somewhere, somewhat near to the uh, Godwin area. Yeah. And uh, they walked in the door visiting, and we're glad to have Brother Ralph and Sister Jeannie tonight. Give them a hand of welcome tonight. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. We were over at the uh, Church of God of Prophet. We had a wonderful move of God. Right now, I want to share with you what God has laid on my heart out of Acts chapter 27. And I know what some of you are thinking. Wait a minute, Brother Mike. You preached out of Acts chapter 28 last year. That's right. And I'm like Paul Harvey. I'm going to tell you the rest of the story now. Amen. You thought I forgot. You thought, no, no, God always has a plan. Brother Linwood, he, he knows from beginning to end. Well, Acts chapter 27, we find the Apostle Paul. He's on a ship. It's not just any kind of ship, but the Bible describes it as a uh, somewhat of, of a cargo ship, but it's also a ship that's carrying passengers. Uh, these passengers are not on a a carnival cruise line that you may go on vacation, but they are prisoners. And Paul is a prisoner. He's held captive. The Roman centurion, the other soldiers, have been charged with their life that if you get away, your life is subject to be taken. So here they are in as what verse 14 described uh, as a tempestuous wind. And, and, and then it says in that same uh, verse 14, uh, uh, a wind, a storm so strong that it was named Euroclidon or Euroclidon. And this storm was so significant that they attached a name to it. Kind of like us. Uh, the meteorologists, you know, uh, we may have just heavy winds and, and they won't put a name on it. It can get to gale force winds, and, and they may not put a name, but when it gets to a tropical storm, they will attach a name to it. And for many, many, many years, it will only be tagged with female names. <laughs> Fellas, don't say a word. <laughs> don't, don't say a word. You'll leave here unlike you came. <laughs> Somebody say amen. But on a serious note, let me say that you and I go through some storms. Some that are so difficult that we attach a name to it. We may not call it Hurricane Hazel that many of our senior saints would remember. Uh, back in the 50s, I believe it was, I, I remember hearing my, my, my mom talk about that. Uh, it was so significant that, that many still remember. Some of the storms we've gone through, Brother Ricky, I, I call my storm that battle at, at Duke Medical Center was receiving treatment for Crohn's disease. It was so significant that I, that I, I attached a name to it. You may have storms in your life that, that you remember those difficult days. 
Maybe you remember days you, you didn't even feel like getting up out of the bed. When you would go to bed at night, all you could do was stare at the ceiling and, and cry yourself to sleep. I'm not asking you to lift your hands. I'm just asking, can some of you identify we've had those kind of storms? Amen. We, we, we've had those kind of storms. And, and you just don't forget about that. It's not that you're lingering in the past. We're grateful from what where God has brought us from. Amen. Now the apostle, as they're going with this tempestuous wind, Verse 14 says, but not long after there arose a tempestuous wind. A tempestuous wind, we get the root word tempest. A lot of our old hymns uh, say, and the tempest did roll. In other words, you're going to and fro. Life gives us situations like that. That Sometimes before we get out of one dilemma, something is pushing us over here. Uh, before we get through with that situation, something has knocked us back over here. Can anybody identify with what I'm talking about? If you've not had storms in your life like that, wait on. Like my grandfather used to say, it'll come to visit you sooner or later. Oh no, I'm not being a prophet of doom. Uh, in fact, well, one writer said, life is a few days of trouble. A wise man once said, that song Jamil used to sing. But as they're rocking to and fro on this ship, and the tempestuous wind began to blow them, they couldn't hardly steer it. We'll read later in this same chapter that they wanted to the ship in order to be able to have control. Brother Keith, sometimes when we're going through the storms of life, we're tempted rather than relying on the power of God. We want to be in control ourselves. So we begin to lighten the load. Well, here in the, our reading here in Acts 27, they begin to throw off cargo. Well, in doing so, a cargo ship that no longer uh, has cargo on it, they, in essence, lost their purpose. A man or woman of God, when you're going through a storm of your life, but you lose your praise, you lose your song, you, you, you lose your faith in God, you've lost your purpose. Because we were created to praise Him. We sing it just last night, I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. We were created. Unlike the angels, we have the freedom of choice. And, and we were created for his delight, as scripture says. But as they're throwing off the cargo, they lose their purpose, number one. Secondly, Brother Terry, we learn later, you'll read in, in that chapter long, chapter verse 26 and 27, that they, with their own hands, they, they took loose the tackling. Well, now, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Don't say amen. <laughs> Brother Ricky, I didn't know what tackling was. I, 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 didn't, I thought it was a football game. <laughs> but I, I learned that tackling had to do, uh, as far as a ship vessel is concerned, it was their steering mechanism. Now, hear me, church. When we're going through storms of life, and you lose the very thing that's able you from the wrong into the right. Well, you don't hear me tonight. When you're going through storms of life uh, and you let go of the only thing that can take you from the darkness into the light, you take a loose your steering mechanism and you've already lost your purpose, you won't survive your storm. I feel the Holy Ghost of heaven. My God, my God, my God. Verse 19 says, and on the third day, we cast out, that, there it is, with our own hands, the tackling of the ship. Verse 20, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tent, tempest or wind lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Now hear me very carefully. Today is November the 18th. 2019. 
from the beginning of recorded time, even before that, when God spoke it into existence, let there be light, and it was so. Every day since then, Brother Keith, the light clockwork, the sun would rise in the morning, and it would set in the evening. But they're going through a storm so difficult. Clouds are so low that they can't even see the sun rise up in the morning. Some of you know what that's like uh, to have the clouds of doubt hanging so low, Brother Ralph, that we can't even see the sun uh, shining down on us. Glory to God. A few weeks ago, I had to be at a conference out in San Francisco, California, and, and when I rolled up there, it was a cloudy day, kind of like today. But Pastor Andy, as that plane began to ascend up into the air, it got to a level where it burst through the clouds. Just on the other side of those clouds, praise be unto our God, uh, there was the sun still there. I said that to encourage somebody tonight. It might be dark, it might be raining, but if you keep on looking up to the hills from which come it might help. Uh, there's a sunshine waiting on you. There's a sunny day. God's working all things out for your good. Would somebody say amen? My God, my God. And I said, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. They hadn't seen the sun, hadn't seen the moon, hadn't seen the stars for many, many days. They began to lose hope. Now, I've read that the human body can go literally for weeks without solid food. We can go for days without liquid water. We can go for minutes without air. I don't advise you to do it, but it's been scientifically proven. But Brother Jack, I'm convinced we can't live a single day without hope. Yeah. Hope is what gets you up in the morning. Yeah. Hope is what uh, makes you get up even when you don't feel like it. Yeah. Hope is what got you out of the church last night. The physical body pastor was telling you, you don't feel like it, but you said, if I can get there, uh, I have a hope that I know my God's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. I could ask or think. Sometimes the storms in your life, it'll drain the hope out of you. And like these men on this vessel that have pushed off their cargo, lost their purpose, ripped out their steering mechanism, and now they've lost all hope. I'm going to tell you what, church. Some storms you'll go through. Some storms God won't instantly deliver you out of it. Amen. Amen. I'll say that for you. You know, we want that microwave answer, but I learned that God is far more interested in shaping and molding me and, and growing my faith. And He's far more interested in that than He is in my comfort. He's far more interested in shaping me into the likeness of Christ rather than He is in my convenience. So he allowed storms to come in our life. And then we read there in verse 21. But after long abstinence, Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and have not loosed in Crete and to have gained this harm and this law. The Apostle Paul. Ladies, you ought to say a great big amen. You, you all know. He's sitting there knowing all the time. Sister Teresa, I want you to look at Brother Ricky right there and tell him, I told you so. I, I told you so. That, that's what the Apostle Paul is wanting to say. I, I told you so. Fellas, that's the hardest thing. That's the hardest pill for us to swallow. Yes. Have you ever been driving? That's what the Bible de describes as a helpmate. Where was I? Have you ever been driving? 
Sometimes we need a little help, don't we, brother? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been driving? You knew you were lost, but you didn't want to admit it. She knew you were lost. The GPS that has that automated voice, that lady in that voice will say, I just give up. You just won't listen to me. And then finally, when you stop and you pull into a gas station and you say, I'm going to ask somebody. And she said, I told you so. Well, that's where Paul is right now. I have to warn them earlier in the same chapter. He said, but sirs, after a long abstinence, that, that, that's when he's holding his peace, trying not to tell them. But then he stands forth in the mid, midst of them and he says, sirs, you should have hearkened. You should have listened unto me and not loose from creed and gained this heart. Some of our storms are truly storms of life. Some of our storms are truly the results of our own decisions. Amen. Amen. It may not make a shout, but I hope it helps us to learn something. Some of our storms are, are is because we've not gotten here and sought God's guidance and direction. Move to that next verse for me there, brother. Verse 22. And now I exhort to you, be of good cheer, for there shall be no lights Loss of any man's life among you but the ship. Well, if you recall the message I shared with you the other year on chapter 28, we talked about how the entire ship was destroyed. How some of them had to swim in. How some of them had to hold on to broken pieces of the ship. But they all made it. They all floated in. And, and, and he told them in verse 22, there be no loss of any man's life. God had promised. Verse 23. But there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve. Read that next verse for me. Say, and fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Now, here's what I'm trying to share with you right now. He's giving them a post-dated promise. A, a post-dated promise. Pastor Andy. When we scheduled this revival, it's been months and months, probably a year ago. But you've been knowing me for almost 10 years now, and you learn that I, I try to be a man of my word. So, so you, you learn that if I said I was going to be here on November 17th, you knew I was going to be here, barring any emergency, out of my control. You had a promise. Now, if you can trust a man's promise, how much more, help me somebody, don't get quiet now. Don't make me stand up here all alone. If we can trust a man's promise, Brother Ralph, we can trust the creator of the heaven and earth when he told Paul that night. He sent his messenger, Brother Nathan, and, and he said, you're going to stand before Caesar. So that didn't matter how that tempestuous wind you can call it your rock like done. You can call it Hurricane Hazel. You can call it whatever you want. It wasn't going to change God's promise. Read that next verse, 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be given as it was told me. Say that part again about I believe God. I believe God that it shall be given be even as it was told to me. Yes. Yes. That's enough to make a deacon yes. shout right now. Yes. For I believe God. Yes. So when you're facing your storm tomorrow, you. you got to say that, Brother Jack. For I believe God. When the doctors gave you a discouraging diagnosis, I believe somewhere deep down inside of you, Jack was saying, but I believe God. When the doctors told me that I was diagnosed with a rare intestinal disorder, that there was no medical cure, that Holy Ghost filled woman of God right there kept saying, but I believe God. She was not denying what the doctors had said, but she had to remind herself and me what the Word of God says. For I believe God. Read that next verse for me. But when the 14th night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, 
about midnight, the shipman deemed that they drew near to some country. Now, here's what's going on right here. It's they have not seen the sun nor stars for many days. That verse she just read was talking about on the 14th night was come. And we're going up and down the coast. We're just trying to find somewhere safe to land. Uh, back in the time of our text, of our reading, uh, they, they didn't have the modern day sonar that, that would guide a ship safely. It, it, it could de deflect a, a, a rock beneath the surface. You know, modern day vessels, they have all that radar and sonar that tells them. But they had to be able to visually see that rock protruding out. Yeah. Yeah. And that next verse, would you read that 28 for me? And sounded and found it 20 fathoms. Now hold right there. That sounded means... They had to let out that air horn. Right. Now, I'm not trying to be funny, but they, they had to let somebody know on the shore whether they were going to bump into another ship. Yeah. They were afraid they were going to bump into a rock. Some of us, when we go through storms of our life, we're afraid yeah. that we're going to hit a solid but what you don't realize, we're more worried about hitting a solid rock rather than believing that I'm standing on a solid rock. The, the foundation, the chief cornerstone, his name is Jesus. And it says, and they had gone a little further and they let out that horn again. And they sat it again and they moved 15 fathoms. One more verse, 29. Then fearing less. I want to shout right here. Amen. Brother Jack, I wish I could dance. I, 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 feel, I, I feel the Spirit of God. We're stirring up something on the inside. And, and fearing less, we, we, we could have fallen upon rocks, but they did what they knew to do. When you don't know what else to do, do what you know to do. They started to throw out anchors. Okay, well, my anchor's going to hold me from going too far from the east. This anchor's going to hold me from going too far from the west. This anchor's going to keep me from going too far from the north. This is from the... In other words, I'm going to stay right here until I get a divine direction from God. We cast out four anchors of the stern and wished the day. When you're going through your storm, and you will go through it, I didn't say if, I said when yes. storms come. Yes. They will come. When storms come. And sometimes you don't know what to do. Sometimes it's so foggy. Sometimes the clouds are hanging so low, you don't see the light of day. You hold on to what you know is right. Amen. Let me get my anchor right here. Amen. I'm anchored safely yes. with the foundation of the Word of God. Now, I'm saying all that to say this. Honey, I believe it was back in June, July of last year. You and I were at the hotel. We were with our daughter, Brooke. They were filming parts of the show that she was on The Voice. And... I was sitting down at the hotel lobby that morning, Pastor, and a television program came on. It was the Weather Channel. I don't watch the Golf Channel. I don't know how to play. <laughs> but you fellows might know how. I don't know how. So I, I was watching the Weather Channel. And this particular Weather Channel, it, it wasn't a forecasting program, but it was a, a, a program that they talked about, they documented various storms in different areas of the nation. They talked about in the desert lands of Nevada how they would have violent sandstorms. They talked about in the mountains of West Virginia how when they hit what they call Hurricane Alley, there was a hurricane that came by and it just left devastation everywhere. And as it was coming, they wanted to interview 
the people. Pastor Eddie, it showed before pictures. Now bear with me a moment. It showed before pictures. This couple had a beautiful house. And then it showed after that story. It was just flat rubble everywhere. And that young reporter got right there. Well, how do you feel, sir? And he was crying, oh, my God. Uh, uh, look, look at this picture of my beautiful house. And, and look at this. All this. I don't know what I'm going to do. I give up. He was just so distraught. They interviewed another. Pretty much the same story. All this lost. My beautiful home. My car. Everything is lost. They did two or three. And then they got to this lady. And sure enough, they showed the beautiful picture of her house. And this, this reporter just knew he was on a roll. Well, ma'am, it looks like it's nothing but rust and rubble and all is lost. Hold the microphone for me. What do you have to say about that, sir? And she said, the Lord give it. <laughs> the Lord give it. And the Lord take it away. And then Pastor Eddie, she said, Bless it! Be. And before she could get the name of the Lord, they went to a commercial break. <laughs> I said that to say this. When you're going through your storm, when you're going through your tempestuous wind, when you're tempted to lose your very purpose, when you're tempted to rip out the only thing that can give you steering and direction. Yes, yes. What's your storm story? How does your storm story end? Are you singing that old hee-haw song? What is it, Brother Nathan? Are you not old enough to remember? Let me get somebody old enough to know it. Let me speak to Father Time right here. That's my buddy Gloom, despair. Help me out, Brother Ralph. Agony on me. Deep, dark depression. Excessive misery. Now, now, folks, you all know me. I, I mean no disrespect, but see, some people, that's their testimony. How can we convince people that don't know our God is an awesome God? Our God, He reigns in heaven above. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns in wisdom and love. Hold that song for me, honey. Our God, say it again. He reigns from heaven above. Say it again. With wisdom and power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Now, Brother Jack, that's more my testimony than gloom, despair, and agony. Oh, just a reader, that's my testimony more than gloom, despair, and agony. But I ask you tonight, Brother Terry, what's our storm story? We've all acknowledged, Sister Sheila, we've all had storms. We've all had those storms, but when you come through it, Brother, you trust My God is alive and well. We, we anchor on to the Word of God. We anchor to the Word of God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is my name.
I noticed that the only thing that God did for the Apostle Paul, honey, I want you to come to the piano, or I'm going to keep preaching. What God did for the Apostle Paul in that storm, he didn't rescue him off the ship. The ship was going down. The only thing the Apostle Paul had with him was a promise. The angel of God, the messenger of God, the God of who I am and whom I serve, yes. appeared before yes. him and gave him a promise, yes. a post-dated promise, yes. if I can use that yes. loosely. Yes. So I said that to say this. What storm you're going through, those violent winds, and I think you know that I'm not talking about a literal wind, but I'm talking about those times we really don't know what we're going to do. All we've got to hold on to is a promise. And if we can believe the word of a man or a woman that we have confidence in, how much more, Brother Ricky, that we can believe the God who spoke this world into existence. We can believe Him. In fact, they said in the same chapter, for I believe God. Hallelujah. So I say this in closing. What is your storm story? This is my story. This is my song. I, I wish I could sing right now. My voice sounds like I've been gargling gravel. Praising my Savior all the day long. So when you get that envelope in the mail and you got a bill, now, I know folks here on Ultra Mill Road in the, in the Godwin area, may, maybe you've never had difficulty getting the financial ends to meet. Lord. Lord. Honey, we're living in the wrong part of the state. Everybody down here. We're on the north end. Maybe we need to move southern. But I think you know that sometimes those clouds about come, don't they? Sometimes that boisterous wind blows. When I'm going through the storm, I'm thinking, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you're going to do it. What storm story? Would you sing that for me? This is my story. Yes, Lord. name of your son Jesus Lord as I've labored over this word I know it's a divine word Lord before I could even preach it Lord you spoke before you could speak it through me just because I have reverend attached to my name bishop attached to my name 
that does not make us immune to storms. Just because of many here today have faithful church members, elders of the church, deacons of the church, choir members, faithful, but that does not make us immune to the storms of life. Lord, we're often tempted to shake off the very purpose that you caused, called us to be in the New Testament church. Lord, we're, we're tempted to disregard the very tackling, the steering, which is your word of God. But Lord, as we confront these storms, and they will come, give us a song on our lips, a word of promise in our heart. Lord, I'm sure when the Apostle Paul was holding on for dear life in the raging storms deep down in his sanctified soul he kept saying for I believe God that it was even so that it was told unto me. That is my prayer tonight. Church, if you're physically able, would you stand with us to your feet? Out of the book of Psalm, I conclude with this word of promise. The book of Psalm, chapter 107, verse 8, 28, verse 28, 29, he says, Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm, hear this child of God, he maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, at the outset of this service, we've acknowledged, we feel an awesome move of your spirit, your power. Lord, I believe there are good and godly men and women in our midst tonight. That even as I speak, they're right in the midst of their storm. Lord, they know what it feels like when they're at the point that all hope is gone. Lord, they know what it feels like that things that have, have been so solid and standby such as the sun, the star, and people that, that we've had confidence in, in, and they've even let us down. But Lord, we put our trust in you. You will not slumber, you will not sleep, you will not falter, you will not fail. In this time of prayer, I'm not asking for somebody who would say, I, I've never had a trial. I always have the victory. But I'm looking for somebody that will be real with me and say, Brother Mills, I'm like you. I've been through storms. There's been times I've cried myself to sleep not knowing what I'm going to do. But my storm story ends with me still giving God the praise. My storm story in the middle of it is I'm anchored on to what I know to be faithful and true. And that is the unfailing word of God. If this somehow distracts you, you know you're going through a storm. It might be your family. It might be your finances. It might be your health. Whatever your storm shape may look like, only you know. Would you step out? Would you join me in this altar tonight? Would you come? This is my story.